the rise of a nation, the founding father of Chinese nuclear bomb, Deng Jiaxing. So, that's the guy who's our main character today, and he loves physics. Deng Jiaxing was born from a well-educated family. His father was a professor for philosophy at Tsinghua University and Beijing University. He had the opportunity to get educated, unlike many Chinese children at that time. Later, Second World War occurred. The Japanese attacked the Chinese. In the time of the war, under the terrible physical conditions and limited amount of resources, he was able to graduate from National Southwestern Associated University, which was a merged university from Beijing University, Tsinghua University, and Nankai University. He made a goal to pursue further in physics at the United States. In 1947, he went to Purdue University and finished a doctorate degree in physics at age of 26. With limited financial support at the beginning, he never had enough food to eat and lives in a tiny dark space, until his talent was recognized and rewarded with scholarship. His achievements were well recognized by the American government. They offered a huge amount of funds and salaries with the purpose of keeping him in their country. He gave up all the offers and went back to his own country after the ninth of the graduation. From 1958 on, Dan spent over 20 years working on the foundation of Chinese physics research facilities and working on the development of the nuclear and the hydrogen bond with a team of young scientists. The nuclear bomb involves nuclear fission, which a neutron shot towards the uranium and it splits to release more neutrons, which trigger more fission reactions. The hydrogen bond involves both the nu nuclear fission and the fusion. Fission provides the activation energy for the fusion. The product of fusion requires the hydrogen isotopes be squeezed together under high temperature and pressures to fuse into helium, which releases heat, neutrons, and energy. Through this period of time, the lack of resources, equipment, and the natural diseases and famines could not stop their success in the field. He was one of the first men who went to the high radiation area in a poor safety precaution to collect data. In his leisure time, he wrote several textbooks about electrodynamic, plasma physics, quantum field theory, and sulfuric detonation wave theory, which were used for the education of young Chinese researchers. For Zheng Jiaxing, he only received 20 yuan, which was $4, for his achievement after 21 years of the first success in the experiment from the Chinese government. The exposure in radiation resulted in his later death of cancer in 1985. When People's Republic of China was formed in 1949, the areas in science and technology were outdated and have received great support from the Soviet Union. In the late 1950s, the divergence between two countries was magnified and all the experts from Soviet Union were called back to their own countries, along with all the blueprints data and written knowledge. Under the pressure, the government set up the goal for the two bombs and the one star project, which was the invention of atomic bomb, hydrogen bomb, and satellite by the Chinese own researchers. The success in atomic bomb, hydrogen bomb allowed the country to rise from the impact of Roten Qing dynasty and the World War II. Politically, it opened the conversation diplomatically with developed countries which eventually results in the rise of a nation economically, socially, and technologically. Globally, there was argument about the balance of power after Chinese nuclear weapon. The fear for a third party's nuclear weapons promoted the non-military peace between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. There are so many brave Chinese researchers and engineers working at the same field, facing the same potential danger and exposed in the same radiations. 
Their names and actions were never recognized by others. Many of their names were not even posted anywhere because of security reasons and etc. The last piece of this work was dedicated to all these brave researchers and engineers who contributed to the nation, potentially suffered by the exposure of radiations, and their names and efforts were never recognized. But they have dedicated themselves for the rise of a great nation.